Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guests are from IBM. We have Scott Fadden. He's in technical marketing. And we have Jim Gutowski, who is all things, what they, at least what they used to call, GPFS. How you doing, guys? Hi, Rich. Well, thanks for being here today, guys. You know, a, a couple weeks ago, we had Jay Muehlhofer here from IBM, and he was talking about software-defined infrastructure. And today, I wanted to kind of drill down on that in the software-defined storage piece of that, what IBM is calling IBM Spectrum Scale. And uh, we used to know of this as uh, GPFS, but I was hoping you could tell me more of what this is all about. Well, thanks, Rich. Um, Yes, you're exactly right. Uh, Spectrum Scale is the new name for GPFS, which is the General Parallel File System, uh, which is software from IBM that's been around about 15 years used in thousands of customers and uh, has its roots in, as you stated, HPC, right, high-performance computing. We've expanded its capabilities and also taken it into new markets, uh, primarily being pulled into big data and analytics, which are very much like HPC, as you know. And uh, we renamed it Spectrum Scale as part of IBM's introduction of software-defined storage, right? It's a new category that's emerged in the last few years. And we have a family of products called IBM Spectrum Storage that does, you know, uh, data management, uh, virtualization, backup, archive, you know, lots of capabilities across this family in software that runs on a variety of hardware. So as part of that, we've we've renamed Spectrum Scale and added new capabilities um, to the product in in this new software-defined storage area. So, Jim, one of the things I found interesting about the announcement was the idea that the Spectrum Scale software could run on other vendors' um, hardware. That's correct. Yeah, it's it's, it's long been available as software that runs on a variety of hardware. Runs on IBM, of course, but it also runs basically on any x86 platform, uh, runs on AIX, Linux, Windows, and uses virtually any storage device to store your data. So it's truly... Hardware independent. Now we do have an offering from IBM that bundles Spectrum Scale software with IBM servers and storage. Uh, We call that the Elastic Storage Server, and that's an appliance-like solution with a graphical user interface, comes you know ready to plug and play. So it's it's a very nice way to implement Spectrum Scale as an option. So Jim, what's driving this? Why is IBM broadening this this storage offering? Well, since, since we have these um, slides, I'm going to move to slide number two here and talk about the change that's happening in the market that's driving all this, right? The, and the change, is, it's probably obvious to all the listeners out there, is this data explosion, right? Uh, many of you, you know, people term it, in one case, the Internet of Things. There are lots of smart devices out there providing much more data that we want to take advantage of and analyze and act on. Um, and we're seeing it, you know, not just in the Internet of Things, but also in, you know, in applications like Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, all of these mobile and social applications that are generating mountains and mountains of unstructured data, voice data, video data, text data. How do I handle all of that data as I try and take advantage of it as a company, you know, moving into this new era? And as we look at this chart, you see a couple of things I'll point out briefly. Um, In the middle, data economics, right? So this massive amount of data is coming, you know, as it says here, 670% more data that storage administrators have to deal with, but their budgets aren't growing to accommodate it. So I've got to be smarter about how I manage all this data. And some of the things that we're seeing on the right are things like software-defined storage that let you put more intelligence in the software and use commodity hardware device to store the data. We're also seeing the emergence of Flash, right? So Flash is becoming much more cost effective and providing some tremendous performance benefits and driving down the cost of ownership. So as we help customers take advantage of these technologies, we're adapting our software to do so. So a question for you, Scott, does business really need a a parallel file system uh, does it really need that kind of data rates to get the job done? Yeah, it really does, Rich. And that's one of the things where we've been very successful over the last number of years is that there's a lot of workloads. And Jim mentioned analytics. 
analytics requires very high I.O. throughput, lots of reads, lots of writes, very fast real-time data. That isn't achievable using technologies like NFS and SIFS, the standard NAS protocols. So where this becomes uh, valuable is in two dimensions. One is in, in the speed of data access, right? The parallel file system is very good at that. Grew up in that environment, does that very well. The other thing is just the raw capacity. Um, in, in a spectrum scale file system, we have file systems of 20 petabytes and larger. These are new scales that NAS appliances don't get close to, right? So these are the dimensions that have really been driving this technology. Okay, so you've brought this HPC technology to business markets. What have you added to what we knew as GPFS to bring about spectrum scale? The biggest things are, well, there's, there's two things. One, we're talking about features that have been there for years uh, that, that people hadn't been using in HPC that, that had been very popular with our commercial customers. The second thing is the ecosystem and environment around it. For example, one of the things, uh, one of the areas that we've been doing a lot of work on is what we call the protocols. So adding, we've had NFS an object for a while, we're adding SIFs. The intent is to be able to share all this data in one set of hardware, right, uh, and be able to scale it up. So we're adding uh, more access to the data, we're adding cloud integration, uh, we're adding usability and monitoring tools that our customers have been asking for, right. So the spectrum scale uh, directive is more holistic than it was before with, with just, you know, just as GPFS. And so if I have existing infrastructure out there, like a lot of data centers, of course, do, uh, can I put this spectrum scale software on top of all that? Absolutely. This is where software-defined infrastructure and specifically software-defined storage is really making it into the market, and that is customers no longer want to toss out everything and put in something new especially when you're talking about data because it's migrating a lot of data, it's replacing a lot of things. What if you can reuse what's already there? Uh, with this software, for example, we have the ability, as Jim mentioned, to use uh, x86 or power hardware. Uh, lots of different operating systems you can run this on. We can use any block storage device, right? So we can use existing storage. We can even integrate with existing NFS storage. So you don't have to move everything off of NFS to use this in your environment, for example. So we've done a lot of work to leverage existing infrastructure. Right. And Rich, there's good reason to do it. Um, we had a customer on stage at a recent event from Cypress Semiconductor, right? high-performance high computing, doing electronic design simulation, um, not running IBM hardware. Um, they tried Gluster to replace their NFS file system to get some better performance. That didn't work very well. So they installed Spectrum Scale on their existing hardware and got a 10x performance improvement running on the same hardware, taking advantage of the, of the parallel capabilities that we deliver for these type applications. So absolutely, we run on other hardware. Well, great. Well, Scott, I wanted to ask you about this globe you have in the diagram there, this the idea of off-premise storage, and how, how does that scenario work? Well, there's a number of different things we're doing in the area to be able to move data off-premise. So today, for example, we have the, the, the concept of storage tiering, right? So you can store between different or tier, move data uh, transparently between different types of direct access storage devices, things like, uh, you know, spinning disks or, or flash. We can move it to tape, and tape can be on-site or off-site. This, this can be on-site or off-site. We're taking that to the next dimension we already have with a technology we call active file management, which allows us to put copies of data in other locations asynchronously across sites. Where we're moving with this is to be able to take that off-site capability and put it into any standard cloud infrastructure, whether that be an IBM cloud or Amazon or something else. We can we'll be able to migrate that data into and out of the cloud transparently for the user. This will allow people to leverage cloud economics without having to redo their applications or their internal infrastructure. Well, Scott, of course, we live in a, a world with a lot of technology sprouting up, new companies with new flash technologies and all this other stuff. But it seems to me that the uh, within the enterprise where data is their crown jewels, that it has to be there forever. I mean, this would seem to be the space where IBM is really going to play well. Well, that's exactly the, the environment where we do well. We have customers who've been running this uh, for over 10 years that have never had to um, you know, throw out everything and put in new stuff, right? They've, they've 
uh, migrated new hardware in and things over time, and the data moves on the background, that sort of thing. The other things were if you, what I just talked about was a lot of the effort to put uh, integration with other things, NFS, existing NFS servers with clouds. Our intent is to be able to live in an existing environment and be able to you to to migrate um, technologies over time without having to redo your you know move all your data, throw it out, or 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 redo all your data infrastructure. So Scott, I wanted to ask you about the software-defined piece of this and, and this idea of a single namespace. I mean, is the world moving towards you know, all object storage? Is this inevitable? Every new technology is inevitable, right? We would all like to say that everything will be on object in X amount of years. We don't know that, right? Um, but we support object today for that reason. We know people have needs for object. We know its economics. We know the benefits. Um, but what we're seeing right now in the industry is not everything's there, right? Not everything works off of object storage. Um, so, yes, object is, is responsible for lots of petabytes of data. There's absolutely no doubt there. Um, does it do everything or will it do everything? I don't know. Well, great. So, uh, uh, Jim, any closing thoughts for folks that might be out there looking at spectrum scale? Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, let me just, again, touch on some of the key things that we've talked about. You mentioned the global namespace. I mean, certainly that's important as you move data among multiple sites or around the world or uh, archive it off, it should be nice to see that data wherever it is. We enable that with Spectrum Scale. Scott mentioned this policy-based tiering capability. So, um, you know, we have a great customer. I was just at a conference where Nuance Communication spoke with us. Um, they do Dragon Naturally Speaking. They do the voice recognition in your cell phone and in your car. Um, they've been using Spectrum Scale for years. They've got about six petabytes of storage. And they do this policy-based tiering. They move the hot data that they're working on at a particular time um, to faster storage. Right? They're using solid-state disks. You could use flash. You could use faster disks. But automatically move that hot data you know, to accelerate my analytics, my applications. And then when it's done, when it's cold, if no one's touching it, we can move it off to lower-cost tiers or to tape or other storage. So some really powerful capabilities that have been in the product for a long time. We continue to enhance it. You know, it's enterprise ready. It's you know proven in the marketplace. So very strong product. It's open. It's POSIX compliant. So you can run your Hadoop workloads on it and still get to other you know use it for other applications very easily. So lots of benefits in Spectrum Scale. Um, as part of this Spectrum Storage family. IBM announced a billion-dollar investment in this family of products over the next five years, so you'll continue to see us enhance the product and improve it and add capabilities over time. So IBM is a solid partner for helping you manage data at scale with Spectrum Scale. All right, Jim, I guess we'll wrap it up here. I want to thank you both for coming on the show today and telling us about Spectrum Scale from IBM. That's it for the Rich Report, folks. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.